The next thing, though, that you should take away from that is a lesson that I even learned the other day. Normally, I follow up with people over and over again, and I stick it with them for a year or two or whenever they need it. I'm still talking to some of these people I did 10 years ago on The Oprah Winfrey Show. I took my power that day because I was seriously insulted that this woman didn't want to believe what I told her, which was for her own good, and she wanted to believe somebody else. So normally, as a woman, I would say, it's all right. No problem. I understand why you believe somebody besides me. We'll talk about it again. But I took my power, ladies. My power. And I said, our relationship is over. This is the last time you are ever going to talk to Susie Orman. I completed my session with you. I told you what you needed to know. And now I'm moving on. And good luck to you. I tell you that. Because an important part of being a powerful woman is to keep good company. You have to keep good company. Because if you keep company with others who don't respect you, don't honor you, don't understand the value of your relationship and what you bring to the table, don't you think that their actions towards you render you powerless to yourselves? So it is important for me, as well as for you, that you understand that you have the power to say, what, ladies? I am what? You say it like you mean it. What are you, ladies? Powerful. Right. You are powerful women. You have to stand in that power and say, I am a powerful woman, and I am not going to let somebody else insult me. Now, words are very important. Words have the ability to create or the ability to destroy, and the choice is up to you. How do you stand in your power when you're afraid? How do you stand in your power when somebody's just left you or you left a relationship and you don't have any money and you don't have a job and everything seems like it hasn't gone your way? How do you stay in that power? It is very, very important that all of you remember the following. Your thoughts create your destiny. What you think, you will eventually say. What you say, your words, your words become your actions. Your actions become your habits. And your habits, what you do all the time, become your destiny. If you say, I can't, you never ever will. If you say, I can, you most certainly will become that which you want. So you have got to understand when you think something, when you say something, and when you do something, those are the three most powerful actions you will ever take. Your thoughts, your words, and your actions have got to be one. You have got to stand with both your feet in one boat. You have to go one direction. You have to understand that you are the captain of that boat. Because, actuarially speaking, women, we live longer than men. I will forever believe we are killing them off. <laughs> but we go on. My mother, next, this month actually, is going to be 94 years of age. Mm. She's a handful, ladies. She's a handful. Right? She's got me wrapped around her little finger, and she doesn't even have to try. Okay. She has been on her own since she was 66 years of age when my father died, way back when. We have to understand, as we go into these nursing homes, as we travel, we do all these things, what's so amazing is these are all women living by themselves, women that go on because their male counterpart has died. 
So you have to understand eventually, most likely, you will at one day be in a boat by yourself directing it. I don't want you to have one foot in one boat and another foot in another boat. Because if the waters start to part, you're going to sink. And the problem is so many times with women is that they have one, boat in their one foot in their professional boat, one foot in their personal boat. Their personal life is different than their professional life, and it tears them apart. I want you to understand that it's all one boat. That if you could just live your life not hating that you have to go to work to make money so that you can take care of your children, but to understand that what you do is a vital part of who you are. And the message that you give to your children when you say to them, Mommy and Daddies, come Sunday, it's Saturday, you're all having a great time, the family's together. Monday morning now comes, and you have to go to work. And what do you say to your children who are hanging on to you, and they're saying, Please, Mommy, please, Daddy, don't go. I love you so much. Stay home with me, please. You say, I know I love you so much, honey. You know, I hate that I have to leave you. I hate that I have to go to work, but I need to make money. Don't you say that. In one line there, you have taught your children to hate work and to hate money. You don't want to give them that message. You want to understand that money is a great thing. Work is a great thing. Your personal life is a great thing. And ladies, if you have too much on your plate, here's the solution. Just get a bigger plate. <laughs> right. You can do that because, again, we are strong. We are vital. We can hold anything that comes our way. And I have a personal belief that God only knows how to give, God does not know how to take, and God will only give you, each and every one of you, as much as you can take. So if you feel like it's too much, understand, in my opinion, somebody else up there thinks you can take a whole lot more than you, and I think you should take his word for it rather than your own. So if the goal here is for you to be a powerful woman, then one has to ask and answer, what renders you powerless? What makes you feel powerless? And I can tell you the number one reason when it comes to money that most likely you are powerless is debt. Now last year, I came out here and I asked all of you, who has credit card debt? whole room stood. So I would imagine that the same is true for this year. So I won't waste time doing that. <laughs> because there's no way things got better from last year. If anything, things got worse. Debt renders you powerless. So you have got to understand, how do you become powerful? You have to have an action plan. You have to know what to do with your money and what not to do. So in my remaining time with you, let me just see if I can give you a synopsis of the action plan for 2009 and the moves that I think you should be making with your money. Now, the first move is this. There's no way that I can tell you everything that goes into that little book that you can pick up. But the best way to pick that book up is literally to go to the TD Ameritrade booth that is here, to make a pledge to yourself that says, I can save for my future. All you have to do is put away $100 every single month for the next 12 consecutive months. And in the 13th month, you will be given $100 by TD Ameritrade. It's FDIC insured. There are no hooks to it. There are no commissions. There are no fees. That is approximately a 16% return on your money. If those of you in this room have not done it yet, I suggest highly that you do so. Now, why is the savings account so important? And why did we, three years ago, name the savings account the Save Yourself account? 
because again, two or three years ago, it was obvious that this was going to start to happen, that this was going to happen. And again, you have got to understand that nobody else is going to save you. You have got to save yourself. You can, you have to say, I can and I will. So here is your action plan. In years past, I have forever said, and you will see me say this on the Oprah Winfrey Show today, although you won't because you're here, <laughs> but you'll see it in reruns at some time, that I've had a change even from last year. I've changed what I want you to do. It is imperative in today's economy, no matter where you live, that you have at least an eight-month emergency fund. At least a fund that if you lose your job, you get sick, something happens, that you can make it for at least eight months. Now, in the past, I always said, if you have credit card debt, you need to make it your number one priority to first get out of credit card debt. After you are out of credit card debt, then start to save an emergency fund. That is no longer what I am telling you. For those of you in this room who have credit card debt and you do not have at least an eight-month emergency fund, then I think it is essential for you to simply continue to pay the minimum due every single month on your credit cards, just the minimum due, and all the extra money should go where? It should go into an emergency fund for yourself. Why have I changed? In the great wisdom of the credit card companies, and I don't know why they're doing this at this point in time, for whatever reason, if you are in credit card debt, if you are only paying the minimum in many cases, even if you're a great customer and you're paying more than the minimum, as soon as you are paying off your credit cards, they are closing your credit cards down. If you are late on any level with a credit card payment going over the credit limit, even if you're the perfect customer, you are getting letters that say the following. We are revoking your credit card, which means you can't use it anymore, even though you own a, owe a balance on it, and we're increasing your interest rate to 32% or they are decreasing your credit limit. You have a $2,000 balance on a credit card, $5,000 credit limit. You still feel like you have $3,000 there. Oh, you can do something with that if you ever had to. They're reducing your credit limit to $2,000 equal to your outstanding balance. They are doing everything and anything they can now to the majority of you to change the way you think, feel, and act with credit cards because they are in serious trouble because the default rates on credit cards are going up and up and up. So if you pay off your credit cards, you now pay them off and they happen to shut down all your credit cards. You don't have an emergency fund, and now you have lost your job, you've gotten ill, whatever it may be. Can you tell me how you are going to feed your children and how you're going to feed yourself? You're not going to be able to. Do you understand that? So your number one priority right now in today's economy, because the credit card companies are doing this indiscriminately throughout the United States, is minimum payments on credit cards eight-month emergency fund. After you have an eight-month emergency fund, then start to get rid of your credit card debt. After your credit card debt is gone, now, besides the eight-month emergency fund, if you do not own a home, you are to start to save 20% down for a down payment on a home. You are not to buy a piece of real estate unless you also have, after the down payment, a eight-month emergency fund. Why? As if you put 20% down on a home, and that is everything that you have, and now you don't have any credit cards to fall back on, you, you don't have any money at all, and now you lose your job, what are you going to do? You're going to fall behind on your payments, and before you know it, you're going to have lost your 20% down payment on the home. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. After you have all of that lined up like that, 
Now you can start looking at other things in your lives. However, while all of that is going on, if you happen to work for a corporation that has a 401k plan or a 403b where they match your contribution, you put in a dollar, they give you 50 cents or something like that, that is an automatic 50% return on your money, you cannot afford to pass up free money today, especially while the stock market is as low as it currently is. So you have got to go into your HR department tomorrow and sign up, but only up to the point of the match. Most retirement accounts only match up to 6% of your base pay. After that, or if they do not match at all, in my opinion, if everything else is like it should be, eight-month emergency fund, you've got your home, you're out of credit card debt, everything is great. After the point of the match, or if your 401k plan does not match, you are far better off having a Roth IRA if you qualify than any other type of retirement account out there. Why? With a Roth IRA, where you can put up to $5,000 if you're under 50, $6,000 if you are 50 or older, you qualify for a Roth IRA if you are single and your adjusted gross income is under $105,000, if you're married finally jointly and your adjusted gross income is under $166,000, you can fully fund your Roth IRAs. If you can fully fund them, listen to me closely, you're putting money into a Roth IRA that you have already paid taxes on. Today, we're currently in the lowest income tax brackets of our lifetime. I don't know where tax brackets are going to be for everybody years from now because of all the money that is being pumped into this system to save everybody else, somehow tax brackets have a good probability, if you ask me, to increase for all tax brackets over the years, not just for those making $250,000 or above. So if you could take advantage of the lowest tax brackets ever, and put money in a Roth IRA with after-tax money today, that money will grow for you, and no matter what happens with tax brackets, as you get older, you're going to be able to withdraw that money tax-free so that you can say, I can retire, versus I have this much money in my retirement account. However, tax brackets are so high right now that if I withdraw the money, I'm not going to have enough to retire. I want you to all be in a situation where what you see is what you get. Got it? And the only way to do that is with a Roth IRA if you qualify. Next, any money that you put in a Roth IRA, you are putting it in with money, as I said, that you've already paid taxes on. That means you can withdraw it at any time, regardless of your age or how long it has been in there, without any taxes or penalties whatsoever. So if you're 35 years of age and you put $5,000 in this year, $5,000 next year, $5,000 the year after, you have $15,000 in there, you're now 38. It's grown to be $16,000 and you need money. You can take out anything you want up to the 15000 that you put in, no taxes or penalties whatsoever. 